Welcome back to the channel. It's Marky Mark here, Camping Secrets. And we're in Dartmoor, the North Moors to be precise, for a spot of wild camping. Let's dig into this. So we're in Dartmoor, the land of my dreams. Growing up in Devon, this was always at the end of the rainbow for me. And it is probably the only place in England that you can legally wild camp at the moment. So that's what we're gonna to do tonight. I've just parked at Rotor Car Park, which is really just a, a little bit of space by the side of the road. I think I can park there overnight. And I've got my backpack, got my tent, my sleeping bag, a bit of food, and I'm gonna walk out onto the North Moors towards Yes Tour towards High Willays, which is the highest point of the moor, and hopefully find a nice little place to camp for the night. Now, wild camping is allowed in certain places on Dartmoor. It's probably the only place in England that you're allowed to do it. Go onto the Dartmoor website and it will show you highlighted where you can stay. But a lot of the North Moor is available for wild camping. But recently that wasn't gonna be the case. A wealthy landowner called Alexander Darwell basically tried to put in place rules that you would have to pay to stay the night. He was worried, well, allegedly worried about people causing mess and distress to his cattle and livestock. And incredibly, he won. And uh, wild camping was not permitted for a while. But then the Dartmoor National Authority took him to the high court and won back. So now it is back to being okay. But I was reading that there are rumors he wants to take it to the Supreme Court where the final judgment will be made. But at the moment, I urge you to use it while you've got it. But none of this just, you know, driving your car up, setting up your tent with your cool box and your barbecue like you're down the campsite. The rules do stipulate that you've got to have your tent in your backpack and you walk out, you leave no trace, two nights maximum. I'm only doing one night tonight. It's early evening, but I'm really looking forward to it. Burn off a bit of this weight that's been building up. Too many beers, too many pies, too many cakes. All right, enough talking from me. Let's show you a bit of the scenery. It's a bank holiday weekend. Most of my friends are going out for beers and party. But I came down to Devon, I wanted to see my parents. And then I thought I could just slip in a quick wild camp. I'm looking for peace, quiet, tranquility, solitude, you name it. Work's pretty stressful. And this is a good way to unwind as far as I'm concerned. Let's go and have a look over there. That's the back of Rotor, the southern edge. Let's go and see what the view is like. The sun is beating down. This is beautiful, beautiful. I always say it, but that's why they say Devon rhymes with heaven. So of course the tours on Dartmoor are famous. Granite slabs of granite strewn over the landscape made for evenings like this so i've come out late been visiting friends it's about 6 p.m now get stuck around half eight went to the supermarket to stock up on some steak for tonight and it shut at four o'clock i was really swearing <laughs> but managed to find a little local supermarket and got my steak in. 
Wow, this is Rotor. Beautiful. I mean, the popular myth of Dartmoor is that it's a barren, featureless place. And in the main, there is some truth to that. It can be pretty unforgiving on rainy, stormy days, and they are a plenty. But when the sun comes out, it's magical, really magical. And you just cannot walk past a tour like this and not climb up on top. Which is tricky when you've got a rucksack on. Woo! Wow. So, the van's down there. Yes tour in that direction. So I'm gonna head off over those hills. Oh, hello. Don't be scared. Oh, I gotta watch out though. I got attacked by some sheep recently. You might have seen the video. <laughs> Killer sheep. They can get very protective of the offspring, which is understandable. And there's a big, hairy, bold bloke walking around. <laughs> I wanted to fly my drone around here. It's got a tiny little DJI Mini 3, under 250 grams. But unfortunately, because there's army barracks around the corner, the app restricts my flying. I really wanted to capture the sunset with my drone. It's not really disturbing anyone. I wasn't gonna go very high, but instead I have to make do with the 360 camera. So you're kind of flying alongside me. Not the same though. All right, we got Yes Tour up there. I've never climbed Yes Tour. So I want to get up the top. I can see like some radio aerials up on top. I want to have a look at those and maybe set up camp. A bit boggy underfoot here. Glad I got the waterproof boots on. This is underwater. Ah, I haven't got my gaiters either. That's yeah, bald. Absolutely dying. Walking up this hill up to Yestor. Just, it's like a, an oasis in the desert, you know, where it appears to be much closer than it is. A mirage enticing you to your death. Yes, tour is a big no, no, no tour at the moment. Holy moly, my lungs are struggling. But I get the feeling the view is going to be absolutely stunning at the top and then it'll be like Harry Matt Sally yes 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 oh wow 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 oh my god oh with the black and blue of the sky sorry to wax poetical but 
Whoa. The sun dancing between the clouds. Oh God, what a sight. So there's the trig point. Sort of quasi, quasi can. Oh, you can get up here. Amazing. Here's the antenna. Man's bloss on the landscape. Welcome to Camping Secrets. This is Dartmoor. Yes, 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 Tor. There's not a soul to be seen. Holy moly. Sheep, cows, rocks, sun, and me. I really feel like I'm on top of the world here. So let's look at the map. Well, I'm definitely, definitely gonna camp up here. I can't believe anyone will be coming up. It's 7 p.m. So, let's go and pitch up. This looks very good indeed. Yeah, I'm going here. Okay, let's get this pack off, get the tent out. Let's get it up. Coat, food, frying pan, nature hike, Star River 2. I'm getting this coat off, absolutely roasting. Okay, so I've got the pegs. The nature hike comes with these little, little pegs. Quite lightweight, not super strong. They seem to do the business. So I generally put a footprint there just to protect the bottom. But I found over time that you can use one temp peg for each layer that you put down. So just put one in there. One in here. This is a bit wet actually. And uh, let's use a proper one here. Okay. Then you get the poles out. So it's one big pole, which then holds the inner together. But as I say, check out my review. It's pretty easy to put up. And you just construct this frame, sort of aluminium frame. It all fits together, locks in place, creates this like spider web of poles which then hold out the tent. And the important thing to remember is that it's color coded. So you have silver, we have gr green. And you've got to make sure your tent is orientated the correct way. Then the pole goes into the loop. Like that. And then at the other end, it does the same. So you look for the eyelet, pop that in. Then you get the little clips. And just hook them in. They literally just rotate and lock. Now you can do the outer before you do this bit, which is good if it's raining. I haven't got that problem today. Thank the Lord. Oh. And then the same on this side to give it rigidity. It is gonna be windy up here tonight. So I'm gonna guy it out as best as I can. Okay, for the fly sheet, it's color coded as well. Let's 
gonna be windy. I've got earplugs just in case. I do like the Star River because of this double vestibule. But I'm not gonna be opening this side. And actually, I can't peg it out properly. Didn't think this through. There's nowhere to really peg it here. Okay. So you can pull the pegs out <laughs> and then move it. It'll probably blow off. I think that's it. Yeah, it's a good thing with a freestanding tent. The ability to reorientate if you mess up. And I always mess up. But there's nothing wrong with that. I've got nothing to kill but time here. There we go. Let's guy it out. Because it feels like it's going to be windy. Flex tail, mini pump, really nice, got rid of all the tough stuff like for pumping up air beds. That's nice. Got my 900 filled down AliExpress sleeping bag. Probably a little overkill for May, but I'd rather be too hot than too cold. Actually, this is my first outing with it, so I really want to give it a go. Let that just expand a bit. So after the usual mishaps of putting the fly sheet on the wrong way around, which always happens with my nature hike, it's because it's colour coded. I must be colour blind or something. I find it really, really difficult. I'm really glad I've got the extra guy lines on the tent. It's pretty windy here. And I think in the night, it's gonna really get a little bit more potent, that wind. And they're not the strongest tents, these nature hikes. So with the extra guys around the circumference, I'm hoping that holds tight. I've got a bit of natural shelter from these rocks. I've got high willows in the distance. And then I'm sort of in a little natural amphitheater here. It's a lovely spot. And then over towards Plymouth over there. Look at that sunshine. It's like God saying hello. Ah! Right. I'm gonna set up camp and get cooking and have my beer. Yes, this is what we come here for.
Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's going to explode. vegetables but with a view like that who cares I had to come into the vestibule the heat wasn't getting into the pan because uh, the wind was just whipping the heat away so I've come inside the vestibule and now we have some action steaks cooking garlic butter going beer on the go. Come to Papa. They're not cooking very much. <laughs> I don't mind raw veg. Well, it's sort of warm. So serene. Only my irritating voice breaking the silence. Cows ruminating. Nothing really human related visible for as far as the eye can see. It really feels like a an alien landscape with alien animals walking around. What must the prehistoric folk have thought when they came up here? See the sunrise and the sunset, the giant ball of fire in the sky. It's no wonder people had moments of inspiration, moments of alleluia, moments of I believe in a thing called God. Who could blame them when you got a view like this? Right guys, I'm gonna head back to the tent, back to Yestor up there, and then um, turn in for the night, I think, after one more beer. Well, back at the tent. And the sun is down. Just a few lights in the distance and a bit of glow in the sky. It's about 10 p.m. and I will be going to bed soon, I think. Um, just finishing my brew dog off and then I'm gonna go to bed. So I'll say good night now. I'm gonna get up at half five in the morning. Apparently sunrise is at 5.40 a.m. So um, I do really want to try and see that. Well, I'm in the tent now. I just wanted to give a little shout out to the Flextail mini air pump. It turns into a little lantern. I really love this thing. It's about 20 quid. It blows up your air mattress and is perfect for just providing a bit of light. Guys, what an evening. The sunset over Dartmoor to the west was absolutely incredible. And it's late now, I'm gonna get up at half five. 
So I will call it a night. Uh, good night and see you in the morning. Bye. Well, it's about midnight and I haven't slept a wink so far. I forgot my pillow. The sleeping pad, I'm sliding all around. I just can't get comfortable. I just don't feel tired. It's cold, it's clammy. Just feel a bit... Ugh, ugh. And uh, doubt I'm going to get any sleep. It's annoying. But... Yeah, this is just the way it is. Uh, not much I can do, really. Just see it out for another five hours till sunrise. Well, well it's about 5.30 a.m. I think I finally got to sleep. I don't know how. Oh. Whoa. I don't know how. It's so difficult to get to sleep. Uh, but I think I eventually did. And now I feel I could sleep all day. But I've got to get up. I've got to get back up to the Midlands. Oh, I've got work to do today, so... So it is getting light, but allegedly the sun rises in about 10, 15 minutes. So I want to get out of the tent and see if I can see the sun come up. Morning. Let's get up. Look at that, that's like another world. That's mist, we're above the mist. That's crazy. I think the sun's gonna pop up over there, probably in 10 minutes or so. Look at the radio masts. That's a really strange sort of luminosity at the moment. There's my little tent. I've got to say, I slept pretty well in the end. I really didn't think I would get to sleep. But as so often happens, when you stop thinking about it, you do go to sleep. I think I'm going to get the kettle on. Well, you won't believe it, but I'm out of gas. So I can't boil my water and I can't cook my sausages. So there's nothing for it but to pack up and uh, get back to the camper van. Which is a bit of a shame. I was really looking forward to a cup of tea. Ah. Uh, Oh, just, I packed in haste. I never do that. I mean, it's worked out all right. It's a lovely morning. So I think it'd be good to trudge back. Oh, I can have a cup of tea at the camper van. Got gas there. Uh, so, I think that is what I shall do. Well, packed up, no trace, except for a few bits of chopped onion. It's about six in the morning. The light is fantastic. Got sort of orange glow to the clouds. And the rocks behind me, sort of silhouetting 
the sky. Oh. There she blows. Sunrise, early in the morning. Oh. Son, how are you? Wow, look at that! Oh, wow, coming down off Yestor, greeted by the most amazing sunrise. Oh, magical words cannot describe that. Got completely busted. Came over the top of the hill, spouting on the video, and there's a chap there contemplating the sunrise. And there's me go talking at the top of my voice. I like to apologise and say I'm sorry, mate. Oh god, this is amazing. I'm gonna go and watch this sunrise. So I had a few words with the guy who I stumbled upon and he was taking photos of this amazing sunrise. He's a YouTuber as well and he had camped out on High Willows, which is where I walked to last night. So I could have fallen on his tent, but luckily I didn't. And yeah, he's a, a YouTuber as well. His name's Peter Flecken. Uh, his channel is Peter 16 Flecken. Hell of a nice guy. He's done up his camper van and he, we both agreed we just want to get out more, do more of this wild camping, see sights like this, and just enjoy the outdoors. Life is too short. So definitely check out his channel, really nice guy. I'm heading back to Road Tour and then get back for my cup of tea. This is the time of day to be out. I'd normally be up, I'd normally be wrapped up in bed at half six. Sheepy. Look at that view. What's up is down, what's left is right. Chasing stars and holding you. I can't see the end, but we'll see it through. Set up. Two bags. Ooh. Yeah, nice to have the camper van when you run out of gas. <laughs> Couldn't believe that. I packed so quickly, I just didn't think it through. I forgot my pillow. I was sliding around on the sleeping mat. I just couldn't sleep. Then all of a sudden I was gone. But then no gas this morning, no cup of tea. So always check your gas bottle. That is a camping secret. Well, I've got my hot dog. I've got a beautiful view. Cars are starting to roll in now. Here we go. So I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna hit the road. I hope you've enjoyed the video. 
I'm going to be doing loads more wild camping this summer. I just really love it. And hopefully I'll not make so many mistakes next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.